Praise the Lord! It is so good for you to be with us in this Community Bible Church Sunday morning church service, and I'm thankful that you are here. Let's pray and let's ask God to be with us and to anoint this service this morning. Dear Lord, I, I love you. I pray, O oh God, that your anointing would be on this service and that you would touch every heart, every life. Lord, I pray that you would be with us, Lord, and give us your divine and gracious help in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's sing a couple of songs this morning. The first one, the Hallelujah Side. Once a sinner far from Jesus, I was perishing with cold. But the blessed Savior heard me when I cried. Then he threw his robe around me and he led me to his fold. And I'm living on the hallelujah side. Oh, glory be to Jesus, let the hallelujahs roll. Help me sing my Savior's praises far and wide. For I opened up toward heaven all the windows of my soul. And I'm living on the hallelujah side. Oh, the world may sweep around me. Yet I envy not her vanities and pride For my soul looks up to heaven Where the golden sunlight gleams And I'm living on the hallelujah side Oh, glory be to Jesus Let the hallelujahs roll Help me sing my Savior's praises far and wide For I've opened up toward heaven all the windows of my soul And I'm living on the hallelujah side Not for all those golden millions Would I leave this precious place Though the tempter to persuade me Off and strive for, for I'm safe in God's pavilion Happy in His love and grace And I'm living on the hallelujah side Jesus, let the hallelujahs roll. Help me ring my Savior's praises far and wide. For I've opened up toward heaven all the windows of my soul. And I'm living on the hallelujah side. Here the sun is always shining. Here the sky is always bright. Tis no place for gloomy Christians to abide. For my soul is filled with music and my heart with great delight, and I'm living on the hallelujah side. Oh, glory be to Jesus, let the hallelujahs roll, help me in my Savior's praises far and wide. For I've opened up toward heaven all the windows of my soul, and I'm living on streets of glory when we reach the other shore and have safely crossed the Jordan's rolling tide. You will find me shouting glory just outside my mansion door where I'm living on the hallelujah side. Oh, glory be to Jesus, let the hallelujahs roll. Help me ring my Savior's praises far and wide. Upward heaven, all the windows of my soul, and I'm living on the hallelujah side. For I'm hoping that toward heaven, all the windows of my soul, and I'm living on the hallelujah side. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, we can live in victory. Because Jesus has already purchased it for us. The next song, the old account settled. Jesus 
has paid the price for my sins and for your sins. And all you have to do is accept the forgiveness that God is already offering you. Let's sing it. The old account settled. There was a time on earth when in the book of heaven an old account was standing for sins yet unforgiven. My name was at the top and many things below. I went up to the keeper and settled long ago, long ago, long ago. that I would settle and settle long ago, long ago, long ago. Yes, the old account was settled long ago, and the record's clear today for me washed my sins away. When the old account was settled long ago, oh sinner, uh, when in that happy home, my Savior's home above, I'll that book with pages white as snow because I came and settled and settled long ago, long ago, long ago. Yes, the old account was settled long ago and the record's clear today for he washed my sins away when the old account was settled long ago. Old sinners seek the Lord Repent of all your sins, for thus he has commanded. If you would enter in, and then if you should live a hundred years and below, a pair you'll not regret it. You settled long ago, long ago, long ago. Yes, the old account was settled long ago, and the record's clear today for you wash my sins away. When the old account was settled long ago Sing it again Oh, long ago, long ago Yes, the old account was settled long ago And the record's clear today For he washed my sins away When the old account was settled long ago And the record's clear today For he washed my sins away Hallelujah! I am so thankful that Jesus paid the price. Hallelujah! Praise the Lord! Praise the Lord! Hallelujah! I want to preach to you this morning when God's people do the right thing. When God's people do the right thing. Now, I'm going to go through Psalm 37, but I want to use as a text Matthew chapter 5 and verse 5. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Dear Lord, oh my Lord, I feel your presence already here, oh God. I pray that you would bless and anoint the ministry of your word in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Actually, Psalm 37 covers most of the Beatitudes, as I think you'll see here in just a moment. Wickedness and evil have always been in the world since the fall of Adam and Eve. Always have been. Wickedness and evil have always been a threat to the people who want to do what's right. The responsibility 
of God's people is to continue to do right when all others around us seem to choose to do bad. That's my message. Let's look at Psalm at Psalm 37. Verses 1 and 2, point number 1. Don't allow bad people to influence your actions. Verses 1 and 2. Fret not thyself because of evildoers, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity, for they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. These two verses, those first two verses, are the whole premise of David's psalm. Don't let your fury burn. That's what fret means, to burn. Don't let your fury burn because of evildoers. Don't envy their seeming success. Point number two. And it is verses 3 through 7, but I'm going to separate those up because verses 3 through 7 are the goals of God's people, the goals that we have to set for things, trust, delight, commit, and rest. Praise the Lord. Verse 3. Trust in the Lord and do good. So shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. Trust God enough for you to do the right thing. God will give you a great life, and he'll take care of your needs if you will commit yourself to doing the right thing. Verse number four. Delight, delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. That is one of the greatest promises in the Bible, and I have proven it true. God has given me everything that I could ever have wanted. Delight yourself in Yahweh. And he will delight himself in you. You get that? You delight yourself in God. And God will delight himself in you. He will grant. Because that's what he does. He will grant your heart's deepest longings. Verses 5 and 6. Roll. It says, commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. And he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light, and thy judgment as the noonday. That word commit means to roll. Roll. Roll all of your life's problems and burdens on Yahweh. On God, and He will deal with them for you. In First uh, Peter chapter five and verse seven, it said, "Casting, rolling, casting all your cares upon Him, for He careth for you." So, if you roll all of your life's problems and burdens on God. He will deal with them for you. He will make the light shine through the clouds. Hallelujah. It won't be dark and gloomy always. God will bring the light. So, the fourth one, rest. Verse 7. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for Him. Fret not thyself because of Him who prospereth in His way. Because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. So, don't get hot and angry about the guy who's doing wicked, evil things and he seems to be prospering. You know, it is difficult to rest. I mean, this, David said, rest in the Lord. 
It is difficult to rest when it seems that something needs to be done about the wickedness going on all around us. I mean, let's get out and let's let's active, be active about something. Let's let's protest. Let's let's uh, 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 do something to stop this wickedness. But God says, back off and let me handle this. It's hard to rest, but but listen, close your eyes. Take a deep breath, let it out gently, and relax. God has it all under control. Hallelujah. Number three, verses eight through 11. Don't let bad people get in your head and make you angry. Verses eight, nine, 10, and 11. Cease from anger and forsake wrath. Fret not thyself. Don't get hot and angry. Fret not thyself in any wise to do evil. For evildoers shall be cut off. But those that wait upon the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. For yet a little while and the wicked shall not be. Yea, thou shalt diligently consider his place, and it shall not be. But the meek, here's our uh, beatitude, but the meek shall inherit the earth, and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. Don't let bad people get in your head and make you angry. If a person can be infuriated enough, a person can and will do stupid things he or she would not normally do. Back off. Back off and wait on God. Cool off and wait on God. Brush it off and wait on God. Look ahead to where these wicked people are going to end up. It won't be good. Now, my prayer, our prayer, is that people would make everything right with God. But it's going to take kindness and love on our part for that to happen. The meek, the humble, will inherit the earth. And the peacemakers will be called the children of God. We read Matthew 5 and verse 5, the meek inheriting the earth. But verse 9 says, peacemakers will be called the children of God. Point number four. Bad people cannot stand it when good people are determined to do right. You may as well mark it down. Jesus said the world will hate you. Bad people cannot stand it when good people are determined to do right. Verses 12 through 17. The wicked plotteth against the just and gnashes upon him with his teeth. The Lord shall laugh at him for he seeth that his day is coming. The wicked have drawn out the sword and have bent their bow to cast down the poor and needy and to slay, to kill such as be of upright conversation. Their sword shall enter into their own heart and their bows shall be broken. A little that a righteous man hath is better than the riches of many wicked. For the arms of the wicked shall be broken, but the Lord upholdeth the righteous. God regards an assault on the righteous as an assault on himself. 
We're living in a time in our nation. I was reading statistics earlier today that attacks on Christian houses of worship have risen like 300% over the, the preceding years. Just in the very first quarter of this year. Bad people cannot stand it when good people are determined to do right. And God regards an assault on the righteous as an assault on himself. God only laughs at the puny attempts of bad people to harm or denigrate his people. All that the wicked do to try to damage God's people only comes back at them to damage themselves. That was what the scripture said. They've drawn out the sword, but the sword will enter their own heart. And here's something that's important for every one of us to understand. The little that God's people have is far more than all of the riches of all of the manipulative of the manipulative billionaires combined. Sometimes it seems like people with all of the money are the ones that influence everything. But don't let that fool you. The little bit that God's people have is way more than all of the riches that everyone else has. God sustains. He upholds those who do right. Number five, God sees and knows all that is going on around us. Verses 18 through 22. The Lord knoweth the days of the upright, and their inheritance shall be forever. They shall not be ashamed in the evil time, and in the days of famine they shall be satisfied. But the wicked shall perish, and the enemies of the Lord shall be as the fat of lambs. They shall consume, into smoke shall they consume away. The wicked borroweth and payeth not again. But the righteous showeth mercy and giveth. For such as be blessed of him shall inherit the earth, and they that be cursed of him shall be cut off. God is very observant. He's always watching everything going on. And God will take care of those who are trying to do what is right. The righteous will flourish and the wicked will perish. CBN News, this just happened just days ago. CBN News reported of a homeless woman living in a car who heard of a Spider-Man bicycle that was stolen from a three-year-old. The bicycle had been parked outside of a store while the boy and his mother had entered in to get a treat, and when they came out of the store, the bicycle had been stolen. The homeless woman who wants to be anonymous felt terrible for the little boy when she saw it on a Facebook news article about it. She took, this homeless woman took the little money she had, went to a local Walmart, bought a brand new Spider-Man bicycle with matching helmet and bike lock, and took it to the Rockland, Maine Police Department to give to the little boy. The Rockland Police, the Rockland Police have labeled this woman a superhero. And I label her exactly the same way. When asked what she would tell the boy if she were to meet him, she said, I'd probably let him know that no matter what happens in life, 
We go through our troubles, our ups and downs, but there's always somebody out there that's watching over us. You are never alone. That's awesome. That's, I hope God blesses this woman abundantly because of what she has done. If you would like to read the full news article and there's more, you can download my sermon notes and there is a link in my sermon notes to the CBN news article and a way, if you want to, to give to help this woman. God certainly sees when people do righteousness. This woman has proved it's not how much one has, but what one does with what one has. And God will supply everything that's needed. Number six, God directs the steps of good people who do right. Verses 23 through 28. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. I have been young and now am old. Yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. He is ever merciful, and lendeth, and his seed is blessed. Depart from evil, and do good, and dwell forevermore. For the Lord loveth judgment, and forsaketh not his saints. They are preserved for Ever, but the seed of the wicked shall be cut off. You know, it's not to say that the righteous never make mistakes. Mistakes are made. But the motives, the desire to do what's right is known by God. And it's not to say that hard times won't come. But God always provides all that one needs. I know that to be true in my own life. God never forsakes those who are his. Number seven, the righteous are the ones getting it all. Verses 29 through 33, the righteous shall inherit the land and dwell therein forever. The mouth of the righteous speaketh wisdom, and his tongue talketh of judgment. The law of God is in his heart. None of his steps shall slide. The wicked watcheth the wicked watcheth the righteous and seeketh to slay him. The Lord will not leave him in his hand, nor condemn him. When he is judged, the motive and heart of the righteous for God's law speaks for them. And God keeps their steps from slipping. Again, I'm a testimony to that. If it weren't for God, I couldn't do the right that I want to do. But God gives that victory and gives that help. Bad, wicked people may not like it. It may infuriate them so much that they want to do away with the righteous. Yet God defeats their purposes and protects his own. God will even justify his own when, even when the wicked courts of law are trying them. Point number eight, wait on God. Verses 34 through 36, wait on the Lord and keep his way, and he shall exalt thee to inherit the land. There's that, that uh, beatitude again. When the wicked are cut off, 
thou shalt see it. I have seen the wicked in great power and spreading himself like a green bay tree. Yet he passed away, and lo, he was not. Yea, I sought him, but he could not be found. Here's the whole, here's the thing. Don't jump in and try to take care of things yourself. Wait on God. Wait, let God do what he promises to do. Prosperity and success are not the measure of value. This bay tree, it just means a native tree. Even though the native oak tree may have grown and prospered for decades, even centuries, to a massive size, its life may end very quickly and unexpectedly. I've seen trees die for no seeming, old trees die for no seeming reason at all. True value is found in doing what is right. It may not pay much, but that's okay. Doing what's right is its own reward. So the last four verses is the conclusion. The conclusion of the psalm, the conclusion of my message. Don't get hung on the present. Look to the end of how all of this is going to end up. Verses 37 through 40, Mark the perfect man, and behold the upright. For the end, the end of that man is peace. But the transgressors shall be destroyed together. The end of the wicked shall be cut off. But the salvation of the righteous is of the Lord. He is their strength in, time, in the time of trouble. And the Lord shall help them and deliver them. He shall deliver them from the wicked and save them because they trust in him. Observe those doing right. Consider the upright, they live in peace. That peace is very, very, very important. It's a peace of knowing that everything between God and me is right. If you don't have that peace, you can have it. Just accept the forgiveness that God is offering for your sins. You know, a lot of times we want to deny everything. I'm, I'm not a sinner. I'm not nearly as bad as, as everybody else. I'm really a good guy. That's not what God's pointing at. We all have sinned before God, and God wants to forgive you of your sins. God wants to bring peace to you in place of the turmoil, if you don't know Jesus, that you experience every day. I hope you'll let him do that. God takes care of his own. If you belong to God, he takes care of you. He helps his own. He delivers his own. He saves his own. Trust in God. Let God make everything right because that is what he does. Let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you, thank you, thank you so much that you're good and kind and gracious and merciful and long-suffering. You're slow to anger. Lord, I pray for the one that doesn't know you. Lord, the one that is fearful 
that they're going to have to give up so much. Let them know, O oh Lord, that they don't have to give up a thing to come to you. Lord, you will give them so much more that all of the old things, Lord, will be a burden to care to carry, and Lord, it will be easier to give it up. Touch everyone, touch every heart. Lord, those that are troubled in their heart and in their spirit because of wickedness around them, give them peace and assurance that you have everything under control. Go with each one of us and help us. We'll give you all the glory, all the praise, all the honor in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you this morning.